El Roy, the God who sees. In Genesis chapter 16, we see the story of Hagar and Ishmael. And we know how this story came about, right? The Lord spoke very directly to Abraham and to Sarah, telling them that they would have a baby. And Abraham and Sarah got impatient and they started to consider their qualifications for God's miracle. And when they began to consider their qualifications for God's miracle, they took the capability of making God's miracle happen into their own hands. And Abraham sleeps with Hagar and she becomes pregnant with Ishmael. And then there's a whole bunch of family drama that just starts going down and Hagar flees and runs with Ishmael into the desert. And we land in Genesis 16 verse 7. It says, the angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said to Hagar, slave of Sarai, where are you, um, where have you come from and where are you going? And she goes on to speak about what has happened. And then in verse nine or verse 10, the angel of the Lord says, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, you are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son. You shall name him Ishmael for the Lord has heard of your misery. He will be a wild donkey of a man and his hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he will live in hostility toward all of his brothers. Here's the thing that happened. The God, God saw Hagar. She, he still spoke blessing over a situation she didn't plan to be in. She didn't desire to be a part of. She went with what was required of her based on cultural expectation. But what happened was God came over her and said, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. He even prepared her for the son that he was going to have and the strong will that he was going to bring forward. Now, some of this as a mom, you're going to look at and say, that's not what I want to hear about my child. But the part of this story that is so important that we see are two things. Abraham and Sarah, like I said, tried to determine whether or not God's miracle could happen through their own personal qualifications and their perspective of their qualifications. You cannot manhandle, you cannot take control of God's miracle and promises and try to execute them in your own power. That's why they're miracles. They come from the supernatural power of God. So if he's given you a promise, stand steadfast in the patience that he will fulfill his promise. I think about this sometimes. Abraham heard this promise directly, directly from the mouth of the angel of the Lord. And still, still he wavered in it. How often do we waver in things that we know come from the infallible word from God? So I encourage you today, remain steadfast. Set your heart in a place of peace and patience so that you can move forward watching God lead the miracle that he's promised. And two, when you're in the desert place, you're not alone. It feels alone, but Elroy, the God who sees, is in the desert with you. And he will lead you out of the desert with blessing and promise because he is a faithful, faithful God.